and depending on the type of volcanic activity that is the kind of eruption that take place or the kind of material that thrown out during the volcanic eruption the volcanoes can be uh, differentiated into exaltive type of volcanoes where the ones that come out from the volcanic activity are mainly vapors and fumes and gases that form major part of these volcanoes contains important gases like hydrochloric acid or the gas uh, hydro hydrogen chloride carbon dioxide hydrogen nitrogen carbon monoxide ammonium chloride sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide of all this sulfur dioxide becomes a very important gas as the amount of increase of this gas in atmosphere can give rise to acid rains and also increase in uh, pH of oceans that is results in ocean, ocean acidification hence this is one of the uh, bad effects of volcanoes when there are fairly huge amount of volcanic eruptions then this kind of volcanic eruptions might, might lead to increase in, increase in pH of both rainwater as well as ocean water and we can see these kind of eruptions taking place in the form of mainly geyser springs fumaroles and sulfatros we have seen what fumaroles and sulfatros are and the associated landforms uh, with these kind of volcanic eruptions are cinder mounts, uh, mud volcanoes etc so you can see in this figure this is called as mud volcano these are cinder mounts mostly these volcanoes when they are erupted in the form of vapors which contain uh, some amount of minerals these kind of landforms can be formed and we can see this is how exalted kind of volcanic activity takes place Mo mostly it throws out gases and dust and the next one is effusive type effusive simply means related to igneous rocks which are generated after uh, cooling of lava in this type of activity there is abundant outpouring of lava which is mainly basaltic in nature hence it is less viscous due to less amount of silica as this flows through large distances it can flow, flow for a very long distances and creates uh, very varied landforms and flat landforms like Deccan traps it might give right, these, these are the main reasons behind uh, formation of plateaus for example Deccan plateau was formed due to this kind of uh, volcanic activity that is effusive volcanic activity Initially, when the plateau was formed, it was about 4 lakh square kilometers wide, whereas in area, whereas now it's only about uh, only about 5 lakh square kilometers can be observed because this uh, whole plateau has undergone various generational processes, weathering and erosion, and sometimes columnar structure can uh, can be formed due to this kind of volcanic activity. And the next one is explosive type, as the name itself suggests, it is explosive in nature. It throws out various constituents which are called tepra. They are all ejected fragments uh, during the volcanic eruptions. Tepra consists of ash, lapilli, blocks, bombs, and tuff. Ash are simply finest uh, particles of tepra, whereas lapilli are gravel sized particles. Blocks are pebble sized uh, solid ejecta which are thrown uh, very, uh, very far during violent volcanic eruptions and bombs are simply lumps of lava which are thrown out of volcano which doesn't uh, fall at long places it falls just around the carta and the tuff is simply a combination of volcanic dust and ashes and smaller particles like lapilli and ash which are smaller in size travel for long distances as they are suspended in air whereas the other kinds like bombs and blocks which are uh, comparatively bigger in size forms just uh, falls just around the carta and we can see this is explosive type of volcanic uh, this is represent explosive type of volcano we can see when a volcanic eruption takes place there is huge amount of acidic lava this is also called as endesitic lava due to in, uh, very huge amount of silica in the lava and we can see various uh, tepra like ashes which flow for longer, longer distances whereas boulders blocks etc fall just near the carta this is carta and these gases are dust when they coagulate are due to or precipitates in the under the influence of rain or wind they come and fall on the surface of the earth resulting in huge mud like landforms uh, when this kind of volcanoes happens and when they, there is a lot of dust in the sky it becomes a very dangerous sign because uh, under the influence of rain this whole dust can form onto the ground and create a la huge layer of mud like uh, landform where even cities could be completely destroyed under the influence of this kind of uh, 
uh, dust uh, accumulation and they, they can be huge amount of loss of life and the next one is called next type of volcano is called as subaqueous volcanism here this kind of volcanic eruptions mainly take place below the surface of water so when volcanic eruptions take place under the surface it cools the lava cools under the surface giving rise to a shape which is similar to a heap of pillows this can be observed in the parts of uh, uh, in the neighboring ocean of Karnataka that is in near the Arabian Sea where this kind of pillow lava can be observed which is formed mainly during Precambrian age and these pillow lava surfaces are covered by a glassy uh, layer so they are, they are called as hyloclastite they are mainly found in Iceland you can see this is the shape of pillow lava and this is columnar structure formed in the process of formation of uh, plateaus especially like Deccan plateaus based on the kind of eruptions during volcanic activity volcanoes are further divided into Plinian eruption Pelian eruption Volcanian eruption Strombolian eruption Hawaiian eruption and Icelandic eruption Icelandic eruption is associated with volcanism which is less violent or completely non-violent with outflow of lava from a fissure long narrow fissure which results in uh, mainly expo uh, outcome of basaltic lava which is basic in nature with, uh, due to less amount of silica in it and it is less viscous and it flows through long distances uh, giving rise to a flat landform like a plateau one good example is Deccan plateau other one is Iceland island in the near the Arctic circle the other kind is Hawaiian eruption which is quite similar to Icelandic eruption the only difference being the, uh, the extrusive landform created by this kind of eruption e even here the lava outflow is basaltic that is basic in nature hence it flows through long distances and the extrusive landform has a hill like structure with very gentle slopes as we can see it has a very gentle slope and the best example is Hawaiian Islands in Pacific Ocean and the other one is Trambolin eruption this kind of eruption is derived from Strambolin volcano which is a part of Italy in this kind of eruption, uh, eruption mostly acidic lava is erupted and sometimes it is violent one most important feature is that this kind of eruptions take place every 15 to 20 uh, in a time period of every 15 to 20 minutes hence the eruption is continuous hence this kind this volcano that is Strambolin volcano is called lighthouse of Mediterranean lighthouse of Mediterranean it is in Italy the other one is type or other one is called as Vulcanian eruption which gives rise to a cauliflower like gas uh, formation even here the volcano a lava that comes out is acidic in nature hence it doesn't flow through longer distances just like in Strambolin eruption it mainly con uh, cools near the vents hence resulting in accumulation of layers around this volcanic mountain giving rise to increase in height and in Pelian eruption which is quite similar to Vulcanian eruption but the only difference being that here the volcano comes out uh, breaks the rim of the cone and flows out along the slope thus it has one slope which is uh, ha which is which has less uh, which is less steepy whereas the other slope which is quite steepy and in this kind of volcano the lava flows along the slope and as this lava is cushioned by a lot of gases uh, under it it flows through larger distances though being acidic and this is this is also acidic and more viscous but still flows quite uh, large dis distances because of uh, the cushioning of gases and the other one is called as Plinian eruption or also Vesuvian eruption uh, due to this uh, name is derived from Mount Vesuvius in Italy this kind of eruption took place uh, about a few thousand years back where huge amount of gases were emitted erupted from this volcano and these gases and, uh, condensed and precipitated and fell to the earth covering huge land masses killing thousands of people this is uh, hence called as Vesuvian eruption even here the lava that comes out is acidic in nature hence doesn't, does not flow through larger distances coming to destructive effects 
volcanic activity is mainly associated with mass extinction of species few million years ago especially during cretaceous times that is which has jurassic triassic and cretaceous period which are all part of mesozoic era so there was a huge uh, mass extinction in this cretaceous period that is the last period in mesozoic era it is mainly associated uh, with huge volcanic eruptions all across the globe due to uh, the impact between asteroid and the earth and during these kind of uh, volcanic eruptions there is huge amount of sulfur that that is emitted as a result it leads to acid rains as well as ocean acidification and also ozone destruction and when submarine earth, earth uh, volcanoes occur giving rise to huge uh, shock waves then there is a chance that a huge tsunami can occur leading havoc across the coastline so what are the positive effects the first one is is it gives rise to new soils there is soil formation due to weathering and decomposition of volcanic rocks and this is very volcanoes are very important in formation of soils and also earth's atmosphere is mainly shaped due to volcanic eruptions uh, since its uh, birth hence the positive effect of volcanic activity is also associated with evolution of atmosphere on the surface of the earth and we can see abundant forestry operations on the steep slopes where agriculture cannot be carried on and they give rise to plateaus and volcanic mountains there are different uh, different kinds of uh, continental features where plateaus are rich in minerals etc hence volcanism uh, throws out huge amount of minerals which are of great economic value for example kimberlite rock of south africa uh, is a rock which is the vent of a volcano this is called the vent of a volcano and this rock has a lot of uh, diamond in it where kimberlite is famous for diamond uh, mining they also give rise to natural phenomena phenomena like springs and geysers which are helpful in producing geothermal energy it also can be these uh, springs and geysers can be used in space heating too these are a direct resultant of volcanic activity they give rise to uh, good tourist spots hence they are of great economic value too there has been several several national parks surrounding volcanic zones like Yellowstone National Park in USA etc and also they provide rock for building and construction of roads kankar which we call in general is comes from this kind of igneous rocks which are mainly volcanic rocks